So Spain conquered the world many many days or years back and actually today I'm standing at a point where all the conquering was coordinated from or actually uh, made possible. Right behind me or right in front right in here is the palace of Spain this one right here and actually the king as we speak this is uh, 2022 the king of Spain his name is Felipe lives in the castle or palace right here here is a general showing the battalion's fort and below it we have lions showing domination showing um, you know the conquering lions are always used as a symbol of power and also to show domination conquering and here we have agua no potable so you cannot drink this water that's what they are saying okay but up here you see a lot of gothic designs and, and drawings see something like that okay so right behind us here we have uh, the palace of Spain where I already mentioned we have King Felipe of Spain living here so Spain long time ago not really so long but some decades it conquered the world from Africa to parts of Europe to Latin America, which is uh, countries that speak all Spanish speaking countries, mostly nearly all, but not really all in South America. All of them were conquered from this significant building right here by the king then. That tradition has been carried out over and over. And today we have this amazing park here. Okay. And the palace itself right here this used to be the garden of the king or queen in those days today it's uh, just a park where people can come relax walk their dogs and also maybe take pictures it's a very touristic spot and you'll always find police guarding it actually armed police right here this is the palace of spain or madrid spain there are many palaces but this is the main one this is where everything was coordinated anytime you hear like the spaniard conquered colombia it was all here all was done below here there are many waterfalls around here one of them being this i came to believe like maybe water is also a symbol of power somehow and actually it's clean water in this case here and this maybe have it has been running like this for decades yes not just one or two days but it could have been for decades let's go back i tell you the story or the history of this palace behind here which right now king felipe lives or dwells So this palace here is 287 years old. It was the first construction began in the year 17, I think 1738. You can imagine 1730 something people are constructing something like this. 17, you know, you can imagine <laughs> those years people are constructing things like this. Crazy, actually. The person who built it is called Charles the Third, or Carlos the Third, or Carlos Numero Tres. He's the one who built it here, and it took 16 years to build. 16 good years. You can imagine 16 years to build this. But again, it's not what you see here. You know, underground. Underground is everything there. Huh? Crazy underground, and all the monuments waterfalls planning everything look yeah. it's not just 
a house you see like this but below actually if you're careful you can see the moon somewhere there wow so anyway let's go back to this video in this video i'll be explaining how i managed to travel 23 countries in less than three months in europe can we begin so my my actual actually my actual journey in spain began here I arrived from Kenya, I'm from Kenya, I arrived from Nairobi here to Madrid where my friend, Chef Matiko, I think you've seen him, picked me at the airport and uh, his family actually is my, Chef Matiko and his family because he came along with the wife and the kid, picked me from the airport and this was the first official kind of sight for me to see, you know, and uh, here I am ending my travels of Europe from the exact same point. Technically, I have done a 360. If you did mathematics and you know what that means is what goes around comes around. So anyway, one thing I've realized about Europe is one, they don't have much. And when I say that, I mean if you look at their resources, talk about like population, talk about like real resources like gold and talk about things like uh, weather they don't have that much it's either too cold too sunny or too in the middle it's it's it's, it's never it's never like constantly a, a climate that you can actually like for example if you want to swim you cannot swim any time of the year there are those seasons or months you can only swim where i come from you can swim any day of the year any single day because the sun rises every single day and it sets down so one thing I realized about Europe is they don't have much, but here comes now the but. They are very organized, crazily organized. Look how they organize their spaces. They have walk lanes. They have places where they have trains underground. So I think that is uh, a way of adaption. You know how you adapt to survive in a place that you feel it could be a little uh, tricky to survive you know look how the castle looks like it's still big it's not just this flows going down this castle has underground it has all this and i'm very sure even it has tunnels this castle i'm 100 percent sure it has tunnels let me bring you closer for 16 years of construction you can see like right there where that guy is standing this here looks like an entire house down here but up looks very different you see so another thing I've learned about Europe is systems work if they say the train is coming in two minutes the train will show up exactly in two minutes so if you are late I'm not saying it's a perfect system in that case I mean sometimes there could be delays here and there but generally generally systems work here like actually Things follow rules and everybody follows rule. Number three, you cannot tell who is rich and who is poor. Okay? You see, people are in t-shirts, like that guy is in a t-shirt, this guy right in front of me in a t-shirt, that guy is in a t-shirt. Maybe you can say it's summer, so everybody's in a t-shirt, but generally is you cannot tell who is rich and poor here because kinda life is well balanced for everybody. If you work, you can sleep hungry if you work, you can take your kids to school. You, actually, most of European countries talking about school, the school is free, most. Even if they pay high taxes, but generally this school is free. <laughs> Look, when I talk about organization, man, these guys, they don't play around. Look, they have trees growing. And even if you see, uh, if you see carefully in these trees, they're trying to guard them. Can you see this? Like, can you see? They are guarding this tree with the, with some paper, you see? And not just that, all the trees, they are guarding them. So when I talk about strictly being organized, these guys are, and system, 100% work here. Can we have another view here? As I give you another point that you can't tell who is rich or who is poor here. Uh, look at this castle that 
another point i've learned is actually mostly in europe they try to make their life as easy as possible what do i actually mean by that is they use machines to create a let's say you want you want to move from one point to another let's say you have to take a train then from a train you need a bus then from a bus you need a tram from a tram you need something else so here they ensure if you stop here there will be a bus carrying you from here which takes you to exactly in front of your house most of the time that is very different with the u.s for example because the u.s is um, maybe if it's not summer there will be no buses going to some direction but here every place has accessibility like for example madrid where i'm just filming this video from i can take a bus from this point here it will take me up to the doorstep of my where i'm staying right now it will drop me right in front of the door yes that is houses and not just one bus there are different buses and these buses show up at any at, at a very specific given time time frame let's say after 12 minutes or nine minutes these buses show up traveling with airlines also in europe is very cheap as compared to other countries like africa uh, i mean continents like africa so you can imagine for example one time i was traveling from mozambique maputo to dar es salaam it took me around um, 500 dollars but coming to europe you can travel easily with maybe like even up to 60 euros actually if you don't have a bag you can travel up to 20 euros in an in a in an airline imagine yes i mean you can book your flight with 20 euros 20 euros i've i've, I've done one for 40 and 60 here while traveling for for the last three months how did i actually travel 23 countries with uh within three months number one is the transport system here i was using a euro rail so when you use euro rail um you can buy one ticket which can take you to as many countries as you want one ticket so like me i took a t one ticket which actually had a pass over uh, over 10 countries so and you can use this same ticket in spain same ticket in uh, slovakia same ticket in czech republic same ticket in uh, where denmark same ticket in germany so they have one ticket which is called a euro rail you can actually use that one ticket you buy it in one station and it's like a universal pass it allows you to go to as many countries as you can and trust me that's how i travel here so sometimes i'll take a train sometimes i'll take a bus sometimes i'll take uh, metros you know they are like metros and trains and all this sometimes i'll take uh, i did all sometimes even i took a boat i remember from helsinki to estonia i took something close to it's not a boat again it's not let's say it's, it's like a big boat also but it's not really a boat you know when i talk about a boat people think it's a small one where you see it and you can see there this was like a big yacht where you see it, it has shops inside, it's like a mall, big mall moving and people just sit anywhere, people drink, people eat I hope you guys saw that video yes, so 23 countries in less than 3 months um, one thing I'll also tell you is, it's actually not easy especially when you go to places and you kinda like them more and you wanna stay and stay so that was the only moment I felt like, man, I should, I should stay longer here. But again, I was like, oh man, I have to go because I have a mission. I have to do A, B, C, D. So you can imagine that. And another thing also that made me travel 23 countries in, um, in, in less than three months, uh, water in Europe, drinking water in Europe, mostly 19, I would say 97%, you can easily access it for free other countries actually have water points water drinking points in every walking distance you can imagine like you can see a water drinking point let's say there another one 100 meters from here even in other places like amsterdam you can find even toilets in the streets you can actually pee in the streets so those are things that actually made it easier for me to travel in europe
for over 23 countries. What I've learned again about Europe is um, people are nice. You know, sometimes people say, oh, you're black, you're going to Europe. They are racist there, be careful. I didn't find any. Though there are those incidences where somebody does not want to speak to you, maybe say hello and they don't, they assume you. I think that's normal. Even me, sometimes some people will say hello to me and I'll still feel, I'll not feel the vibe of talking to them and I'll just do my thing. Maybe I'm having a bad day or maybe I'm having a good day. So it all depends on these uh, places. I mean, facts, factors. Okay. I'm having a jacket. So I took a jacket from home because I woke up very early. But I just realized mm, <laughs> it's very hot here. Actually, I didn't need one, but in the morning I needed one. Wow, Europe. People like soft life, my friend. People don't want to struggle here. People don't want to put a lot of effort in what they're doing. People want machines and systems to work. And uh, generally, I feel like people or the governments here totally work for the for the people. Like not only for the people for themselves like they want to make life easy for everybody especially if you work if you work you pay your taxes you know wow so we are leaving the castle the palace where king felipe stays actually as we speak spain is well built one of my favorite countries i love the most while traveling was uh I, I categorize these countries into two big countries and small countries so when I talk about big countries I talk about countries like France, Germany, uh, Spain so I think there's, uh, there's an ambulance moving so for me I'll say let me start with the big countries the countries that I really love the most uh, is the one I am right now. I'm making this video from Spain. Spain has been great. I've uh, been to Madrid. This is my second time in Madrid. First is they gave me the visa. I wanna thank you if the Spanish embassy is watching this from Nairobi, Kenya. I wanna thank you for making this dream of a young uh, kid from Africa actually like manifest to reality. You know, before I applied for the visa, I was thinking, where should I apply this visa from? Then I came to a conclusion to say, I need to apply from Spain. I think people from Spain are like us Africans. I think they're more, more friendly, more warm, more, you know, like they're more welcoming. And I was not wrong. So when I applied my visa, they gave me a 90 day visa. And that visa actually made it possible for me to travel over 23 countries. Actually, I was left with like three countries for me to finish the Schengen visa, the Schengen region. That is uh, Slovenia, uh, we have uh, Monaco and I think Iceland. Yes, if I did those three countries, I would have gone to the entire Schengen region. Imagine 26 countries out of 26, but I did 23 out of 26. And um, big countries that I really didn't like that much, uh, I don't know if it's good to say this, but uh, I have no ill intentions or uh, I felt Italy was a little rough for me. I saw people pickpocket others like real life and all this. Italy was a little rough for me. I'll say not for me, for me, but from the observation I did. I could be wrong, and this is just a perception. And uh, the middle class, like I, when I say middle class, is the country that I loved with uh, a, a both good and, you know, I, France gave me that feeling like I could live here, it, it looks nice. At the same time, it say, I said, oh, but Spain looks much better, something like that, you know. So Spain was the best country I loved or it is because I'm right here right now I know maybe when you're watching this video I'll be out of uh, Europe I'll be out of Schengen but I already told you maybe it's because of the emotional like connection that uh, Spain gave me a visa so it feels more special to me it feels like something uh, yeah you know when a country gives you visa you feel good about that country you support it so I think that's what I'm feeling right now but generally, Spain is good, man. Spain is good. And also, there are many uh, people from my country I've met here. They're all loving it. They say Spain is nice. And um, the smallest countries that I love the most, uh, Sweden. Sweden was the, the best country I love the most. And uh, what, did they re what did I really like in Sweden? The people are nice. You know, also sometimes when you go to these places, what really matters is the people that you meet. So like me, when I was in Spain, I met, not Spain, in Sweden, I met really nice people. My friend from uh, Somali who lives there, 
uh, but cheer, thank you my brother I know you're watching this also here in Spain chef Matico was there to support me I have many many people to thank actually maybe in the end of this video but uh, Sweden in the smallest countries was one of the best places I felt really okay and also Denmark Denmark came out as a surprise for me one of the reasons I love Denmark is because when I went there uh, dating as a black person was easy for me there I don't know people just embraced me and uh, even there's a video I've never posted this where I met some local boys and they took me to a club they bought me beer I, I not just one like they were so into you know like hey bro let's go let's go they did, I didn't feel like them pushing me away saying mm, you know all those stuff so Denmark Sweden those were my favorite small countries Norway I didn't see much in Norway and when I went there it was raining and I stayed only like for three days maybe when I go back I'll have a different perspective and guys I am not God like I'm judging countries uh, this just a perception I'm giving you so maybe you may actually follow it or not and um, I am not perfect maybe I could be wrong uh, because somebody would be like Maro I live in Norway it's better than Sweden but you say Sweden is better I don't know you know so it is purely personal and I have no ill intentions about this I'm just giving you as a traveler what I felt in the in the last 90 days traveling in um, 23 countries you know uh, I loved Switzerland as a small country but the problem with that country as a traveler was it was too expensive for me actually within like 36 hours I spent over 1,500 euros there everything is so expensive like food is like 36 dollars up or to 40 I would pay like like beef and rice and you know just normal food which would pay like 10 euros anywhere there it's like 46 euros so Switzerland was really nice but as a tourist traveling for short term you feel like your money you're losing a lot of money you'll be like man I would spend this money somewhere else yeah you know so Sweden was also nice not Sweden I mean Switzerland but too expensive this is the castle of Felipe this is uh, Madrid Spain actually Madrid Spain is the capital of Spain not Barcelona you know actually my favorite uh, place to stay in um, Spain was Valencia I love Valencia like crazy. Valencia was so so good. It was so so good. Okay, now we've categorized countries into already so far two. The big countries where I've said my favorite was Spain, and the small countries where I've said my favorite was Sweden, followed by Denmark and Switzerland, and I gave uh, the reasons why. Then now we're gonna come to the countries in Eastern Europe. Technically, countries people consider poor. Technically. And uh, as I make this video, for me, I think poor is lack of freedom. But some people think poor is lack of financial muscles. So let's talk about this country, Eastern Europe. My favorite, when you talk about Eastern Europe, is like uh, maybe some people will say, Why are you calling us Eastern Europe? We are Europe, don't separate us, don't do this. But countries like Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, you know, countries like that. Even Slovakia could pass for that, but you know. So the country that I really loved the most was called um, uh, Latvia and the capital of Latvia was Riga. If you go watch my video, it says the best country, the best country of Europe. I think something like that. The best European country. People are so friendly, like crazily friendly, like, whoa, bro. I wish I stayed in Latvia. Actually, it was really cheap. You know, the money you'd spend in Switzerland for a day, you can spend it for a week in Latvia, easy. The Airbnb was nice, like I booked an Airbnb and the host actually uh, uh, put some, sh not champagne, like some nice wine, nice, like people are so, so nice. I was, I, I was getting lost in uh, Latvia because my orange SIM card did not work. Actually, actually about SIM card, we're gonna talk about that after this. So my orange SIM card was not working, so I would get lost in the street and ask people randomly and people would take me to those places that I wanted to go. It was really, really, really amazing. Czech Riga, Latvia is one of the hidden gems of uh, Europe, okay? Riga, I'm telling you, Riga. Check even my video, just Google I am Marwa, uh, Latvia or Riga, Latvia. Let's talk about SIM cards and how to travel with the SIM card in, uh, in Europe. So the best way is find an orange SIM card 
and I'm saying the best way because I used it, it worked out for me and it can work out for you too. So come to Spain or anywhere, maybe in France, get an orange SIM card. Once you have this orange SIM card, um, use it. Tell them you want uh, a European uh, package. It's it's expensive sometimes, but uh, I'm very sure within three months I spent like, uh, let's say like 200 euros. Yes, but remember I was on roaming mode. Roaming, you know, roaming takes a lot because it's 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 uh, it's crazy, you know. It's roaming, so it's not like when you have a SIM card from the same country and you're living in the same country. It's cheap. But roaming, and I used my internet, even right now I still use it. I had an orange SIM card from Spain, and with this SIM card, the only place that I had problems was in uh, Latvia, okay, and uh, in Switzerland, it didn't work. Yes, it didn't work. And the reason I was only in Switzerland, Switzerland is because um, it's part of the European Union, no, it's part of the Schengen region, but not part of the European Union. You know, Switzerland is, is another unique country. Please watch my videos of Switzerland. You're going to learn more about that. Yes, it's, um, it's my last day, man. It's my last day in Europe. What do I feel about Europe? Is this a place I can live? Definitely, I would. I would actually consider having kids here in Europe than any other place in the world. One of the reasons is it has really systems that work. I think for me, I value systems more than anything else. I think I like security. I think everybody likes security. And you want to be in a place where systems are working, you know. If we talk about school, it's free, it means free. If uh, healthcare is free, it means free. Though you have to pay a lot of taxes, but it's good because you have no worry. Let's say you are not there tomorrow, your kids can still go to hospital, they can go to school. And another thing is, uh, is the idea of people going to school. And here I'm talking about some of the European countries have school from like primary school up to the university. And the problem I'm talking about, why I'm considering that as one of the major issues, I would consider having like kids in Europe and things like that or a family. You don't have kids who, after finishing school, instead of them having a work and start maybe earning money that will help them move or follow their dreams, but they come with a debt. You finish school, you don't have a job and you have a debt of, let's say, 40,000 uh, euros. So your first job is actually to pay the money that you spent in studying. So you see, you don't have to be in a position like that, especially like the American system, Kenyan system. There are many systems which are like that, where actually school is not free. When I say school, I mean up to the university level, it's not free. And you have to pay for every single, you know, educational element that you're gonna be doing during your lifetime. So countries like Spain have free healthcare, free systems, uh, free education systems. So you see, that's much better. Okay, what else? What else? Um, what else? Uh, let me see questions that you people would ask me. How much did I spend? Whoa, that's a question. Maybe I don't know, bro. Actually, I didn't want to check on that because some other days I would spend like 1,200 euros in a day, and I'll feel so bad that man, I'll be like, all this money, man, in my home, I would have bought land. But I'm like, bro, you're traveling. Come on, bro. Like you, you know. So I think on average, uh, take a hundred dollars a day times 30. Yes, do that. That is including flights. And then from there, add $300 up just for emergencies because there are things that I had to pay before coming to Europe. Things like uh, I paid for my insurance. You need an insurance before you come to Europe or uh, things like uh, flights coming to Europe. So. Uh, there are many factors leaving Europe. I need flights. You see that those distances again. So That is how I think I think I spent over 10,000 US dollars in this trip in three months And the reason is because I was moving so fast and uh, you know also moving so fast You spend a lot of money because like for example places to stay uh, If you stay in a place, but again, it's nearly the same uh, it depends because you have to balance other countries are more expensive others are cheaper so other places uh, water is free other places you have to buy water you know other places are let's say you want to go to a club it's free entrance other places you have to pay so 
it is what it is man it is what it is oh another big country that i really love is poland i'm sorry not to not to include this poland is another country i really loved i wish i stayed there i swear poland was nice i love poland it's nice people i met nice people in poland yeah poland was really good please check it out for me before going to poland i thought it was a poor country people are struggling but going there it was just this amazing country people are into family i love countries that love family because i think i'm a family guy not i think i am a family guy even though i don't have family but i think i support family yes so yeah poland please go check poland it was really really nice and i overstayed in poland than any other country actually in europe uh, spain and poland have, have been those two countries that i stayed longer than usual oh okay if i go like that it's gonna get uh, like noisy so let's keep going today we're gonna film this video around this castle which took 16 years to be constructed Eight, uh, 1738 that's when they started constructing this this uh, castle here or palace and the mayor that time the mayor of madrid okay the guy who actually designed kind of the entire madrid his name is charles the third he's the guy who constructed this you know for 16 years you can imagine so uh, let's talk about dating uh, dating especially for singles you know coming to europe maybe you when i say mara where can i go and get a wife uh, generally i'll say uh, it all depends on your vibe bro uh, and this goes both ways for females and and males watching this uh, it all depends on your vibe if you have a good vibe you can always it cannot be a hassle meeting new people or meeting a girlfriend or a boyfriend even if you want things which are like short term long term <coughs> it cannot be a problem sorry i've been talking too much it can't be a problem especially if you have good vibes the problem comes when you put pressure on yourself because you say okay i'm in denmark i have to find a danish girl i have to do this then that pressure itself kills you softly you know and sometimes if you don't achieve that you start feeling like oh man maybe here people are racist or they don't like me or things like that uh, talking about racism where did i actually see much racism let me see oh much racism i can't remember bro i can't remember yeah it's the same thing as i said in the beginning of this video some people will tend to like you some people will not want to like you let's say you are in a station bus station or uh, or um, metro station you're asking for direction some guy will assume you some guy will just be there helping you like today some guy helps us, helped us a lot so yeah so you can actually imagine it's uh it's not really about the country i think some people certain people will always just not feel your vibe and some will actually be there to support you as much as you need them you know mm, the most beautiful country switzerland top top i know i didn't go to the mountains but i could actually tell it was one of the most beautiful countries i went to um country that i would stay in europe i think every country had its positive vibe you know i went to places like luxembourg where transport is free you sit in a car and you don't care how nobody pays for that you can imagine so it's 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 all a mix of reaction every country had it's it's like power power spot but generally europe is like the same bro same system same transport system i love the most free movement you know the free movement of people is something that i really love in in in, uh, in uh in Europe you can just take a train and you just cross the borders you even don't know you've crossed bro you just realize oh I'm here already imagine you know other countries especially like uh, in Africa people are so I don't know selfish or hate, hate themselves so much that they just want to put borders 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 I hope one day if you become a leader especially if you're from Africa one of your main purpose is make free movement let people live you see you can't tell those guys are from where because here it's free movement man their borders are open for themselves so i don't know why and imagine these are the guys who drew borders for africa <laughs> yeah especially in germany you know berlin conference i think 1884 you can imagine or 1884 to 1886 for two years man they they chopped africa like this and today we as africans we are sticking with that okay so let me give special thanks to the guys who actually made my trip more possible 
number one there are too many people if i forget your name because i didn't write it down but i'll say every single country had somebody who helped me you know every single country starting from spain here chef matico bro thank you so much then from spain i went to i went to i i can't i can't go up to 26 countries but i'll say my friends from amsterdam my brother i know you're watching this thank you so sam man thank you so much sam also my brother Terika, uh, Terika from um, uh, France, thank you, man. I think we're gonna see each other again. My friend Devi, you know, in uh, in Germany, Berlin. Thank you for hosting me, bro. You fed me, man. I met amazing, amazing people. Actually, you guys are gonna be honoring you on my Instagram stories, not here. Yeah, because maybe some Instagram stories. Please go follow me on Instagram. Go check my crazy travels. Also. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you've missed 50% of my travels. Trust me, I post a lot of a lot of stories on Instagram. Right now, even I'm resting, I'm not posting that much. Yes, man. Europe has been great. Will I be back here? Yes, for sure, bro. I can actually I'll choose coming to Europe uh, anytime, anytime. I also want to try coming to winter and see how it is, but it should be very cold then. But I prefer summer, I prefer hot weather like this. I can sit in a park without wearing or without wearing a heavy jacket and still feel nice. You know, and also summer people are warm, people are welcoming, you see people in bikinis, swimming, the energy is high. So the best time to come to Europe is summer, though it is the most expensive time. Because like I was in Santorini, Greece. Okay, oh, our, our sister from Greece that actually has made me rem remember you. Thank you so much for hosting me. We did a video here, the lady from Kenya. I don't know if you remember Santorini Queen. Thank you also for your nice, nice host. Maybe next time you invite me for free. Uh, the thing is, uh, like Greece, I was told during summer, that's when everything becomes alive, Santorini. When it's winter, everything is closed. So summer, they try to charge you three or four times the normal price because they want to compensate on those seasons that they are closed. So you can imagine, that's how businesses survive in Europe. What else can I say, bro? Yeah, I didn't try this anywhere, so it's just coming from my mind, a free expression. Yeah, man, I love Europe. I love Europe. Uh, and it's not the fact that uh, I, I, I hate some other countries, so I love Europe. It's a nice place, you know, they say, give caesar what belongs to caesar you know yeah europe is a nice place very well organized look people chilling that guy playing his guitar without even caring who is here police the only place i've ever been stopped by police apart from immigration officers uh, which is very normal in some countries was in italy they asked for my id and they checked but I had just arrived, I did a video about that. That's why I told you I didn't like Italy that much because I felt like I felt like a country which is kind of afraid of people coming in or it's, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong in my perception because it still gives other people visas. I, I met a friend in uh, Amsterdam who actually Italy had given a visa. So it's, it's just a matter of perception and coincidences and maybe you're in the right time in the wrong place at the right time or right time at the wrong place you know like something like that yes so yeah my europe tour is officially coming to an end i want to say thank you for all of you who actually like religiously clicked on my videos please please if you've not subscribed to my channel man my my goal was to leave europe with 400,000 subscribers i ask you guys to keep subscribing to my channel because more adventures are coming yeah i think i have done europe like crazy i don't think there's a youtuber who actually has traveled in europe like me always remember to carry a water bottle you can refill it anywhere and you can actually save a lot of money instead of you buying one or two euros this one you refill it anywhere and you you have free water because mostly in europe people have free water you know what else can i say hmm. what else can i say about europe man yeah it's expensive just carry enough money with you come during summer though it's expensive again but again it is what it is mm -hmm. the best way to travel around europe is uh, if you have time take trains man trains are so good they are interconnected country to country city to city 
but if you don't have time uh, take flights flights are quite easy don't carry a big bag just take a check-in bag because that makes things easy for you don't carry a lot of stuff with you things like clothes you can buy them anywhere you can even you know and if also you want to stay cheap uh, try hostels hostels are quite cheap you find uh, you can find even hostel for 14 euros to 38 euros to 40 euros a night and hostel is a place is, is a room with like eight beds so you can be sleeping with strangers some strangers make this type of noise <sighs> when you're sleeping but it is what it is you say oh man i'm saving my my euro yeah the exchange rate as i make this video is euro and the dollar is the same one 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 so anything I say, seven hundred dollars equals to one is equals to seven hundred euros. So yeah, okay guys, thank you so much. I love you. Uh, I wanna thank the Spanish embassy for giving me this visa. I know I already said that, but I believe without them, I would not be making this video. Without them, I would not have made such a major progress in my travel adventures around the world. I wanna say, if the Spanish embassy is watching this or you've been watching my videos maybe i did something that you guys didn't like but uh you know i ask for forgiveness i'm just human but i want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for just uh giving this uh, village boy a chance to see the world and he took advantage of it in a good way and he saw the world i think uh, next time uh, the embassy if you're watching this i'll ask for a longer visa so i can actually enjoy more actually i feel pressure of living in a good way i I'm not complaining, I'm just saying I wish I stayed more because there are countries I didn't go, even parts of Spain I didn't go, but uh, thank you, thank you, I think next time, it's always, there's always a next time, thank you so much, and uh, thank you to my subscribers, uh, please uh, help me thank the Spanish Embassy for making that possible, you would not have seen all these adventures if they didn't say yes to my visa, and that comes from the bottom of my heart, anyway, 23 countries in less than 90 days who does that comment here and i'll see you in my next video in my next adventure next continent next everything ciao ciao nos vemos a luego remember god is great god is great i'm grateful to god thank you god All I need is you, baby, baby. Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles. So I'm officially saying goodbye to Japan. As you see, sir, welcome to Japan. Where is Elisa? Soy de España. I'm heading to.